pick the wrecker up with an overhead crane or with a fork truck with an extension on it if you, if you prefer to do it that way. Or you can uh, pick up the wrecker with the forks on the truck by inserting the angle bar on the back of the wrecker. That angle bar has two uses. One to span a frame on the truck you're picking up and also to use it to load your wrecker with. is completely secured on the front you're gonna have a, a safety chain on both sides of the front of the wrecker this is one chain but it's stored at the front of the wrecker and it'll go down and hook to your frame underneath the frame so we're gonna we're looking at this is how the, how the chains come across they just loop underneath be careful not to pinch an airline or electrical line but your chain is going to be hooked underneath your frame of your truck and then the binders will complete the operation by snugging those up you have a chain of binder on each side. Same chain, two binders. There is a notch in your, to keep your extra chain in the, on the front of the wrecker, there's a notch here that we built into the, into the rigging to the plate on the front of the wrecker to hold your excess chain. But this is a typical operation, this is a typical normal installation of the wrecker. One safety chain on each side. And of course when you install your wrecker, you should always give it a tug, just like you would a trailer when you hook a trailer up. You should always give it a tug with a fork truck uh, and a chain to assure you have a, a positive lock on your kingpin. Again, safety first. To secure the back of the wrecker, you've got two frame locks that slide underneath and capture the lip, the lip of your frame on both sides takes a one and an eighth inch wrench or a crescent wrench and again uh, you don't have to go crazy on the torque you slide the, to the inside when you're installing the wrecker and then when, you, when you're securing the wrecker to the truck you slide them to the outside edges and let the, let the frame clip catch the edge of the frame the frame lock will catch the edge of the frame 
So it secures the back of the record. You're ready to go. Your record, by plugging your electrical light cord into the port on the front of the record, the units that have the battery power packs will take this, the Model 7 and the Fleet 2012, are not equipped with batteries, they're equipped with jumper cables to run the power unit. When you run your lights on your tractor, your breaker is set up with a one-way electrical diode and a 10 amp breaker in the line. It'll trickle charge your battery when you run the lights. Also, it'll activate your rotating beacon light. Plug into the front of the breaker, run your lights, you're good to go. When you're bobtailing down the road, the best place to store your, put your program in very top position. The reason for this is so that traffic behind you can see your tail lights. Whenever you're transporting the truck or transporting the probe tub, you need to make sure that your positive lock bar is installed and you bring the jib down to land on your positive lock bar. That's the way to travel. Again, the back of the wrecker is up, they can see your tail lights. Your angle bar, again, remember we had two purposes for the angle bar. One was to allow the wrecker to be picked by any size fork truck that you'd run into. Slots for the angle bar to sit in here, and any fork truck, whether it be a 40,000 pound fork truck or a 4,000 pound fork truck, doesn't make any difference. There's plenty of room to get your forks in here. The forks go right here. Pick it up. The angle bar acts as your front stabilizer. Pick the wrecker up. Also, this angle bar, you notice there's a couple of knobs on the bottom. It will keep your chain from slipping off. And when you have a truck that has an open rear frame, the cross member is inset, this, this bar will actually act as a bumper for your tow capacity. What I do, I take a couple of uh, seat clamps just to hold it in place until I get in the position, put my chains underneath the wrecker, and we'll show you how to do that. There we go, right? across the back of the frame. When you go to hook your truck up, you get here in the transport position, the jib is in the air that you see the Now we're ready to hook this truck up. So we're going to pull your positive lock bar out, get the gear off, pull the positive lock bar, lower the jib. The reason for this, one man, you back up, when you touch the back of your truck, you know you're exactly where you need to be. You want to touch the back of the truck, and that's the uh, position you use to pick the truck up. So as this comes down, you'll notice this bar here will hook up your angle line, and you've got a, a stopping block here that will allow you to put the truck in a proper position and pick the truck up. Really, you should have about an inch away, half inch away from this truck. So we'll go up to it and uh, hook it up. Uh, there's several ways to hook your truck up, but what we're going to do, we'll use two chains, make it real simple. We get a, you need at least three eighths inch ring eight is the minimum you would use to hook the truck up. As a working load limit of around 7,000 pounds per side. The back of your truck weighs approximately 8,500 pounds. The front of your truck will weigh about 11,500, somewhere around there. The first thing you, you do when you're dropping your axle, your chain between the axle and a, and a brake cam on the very front, the front of the front of the truck, that's the first process. The chain will be dropped through there, and then we're going to pull the chain to the back so that you you're going to basket the whole back of the suspension. As you drop your chain down in between your brake cam 
and your axle, you got two ways of hooking the front of the chain up. If you've got a clean frame and you've got a good hook here, you can hook your chain right to your frame. Real simple. Now, if you've got a double frame, or if this hook isn't clean, you can use these chains and glad hand the chains together. Try to put them kind of in the center there so that you get the same amount of chain on the back of the truck. Okay, now we've dropped the chains down between the brake cam and the axle. One on each side, one 20 foot chain. You can use half inch, 3 eighths inch. We're using 3 eighths today, grade eight. I've got a hook that we designed so that I can crawl underneath the truck. We're gonna bring the rest of this chain to the back of the truck. So I use this, this hook to pick the chain. We're gonna pull it all the way to the back so that we're picking up the whole back of the suspension. Again, I, I use this hook so that I don't have to crawl underneath the truck. And you might want to do the same thing. This is simple bay hooks you can buy or you can build. Uh, those are available at any of the tow shops. And as your chain comes to the back, on this particular truck, it's similar, we're going to go over the top of the frame. We're coming out from underneath. And we're going to lift the whole back of the truck up. What we're doing, we're running the chain parallel from the front of the truck. Glad hand the two chains together again. And then we're going to we're going to run down underneath the front axle, taking care to go between your brake cam and your axle so that you don't bruise that brake cam. The chain will actually be picking up on your front axle. And then we're going underneath the back axle. And again, to avoid damaging the brake cam, we're going underneath the axle itself. You'll see we, we fished the chain up between the axle and the brake cam. We wrapped it over the top of the frame. You bring the chain back and hook it to the, your jib, the quick jib on the pro tote. Do the same on both sides. What we've got here now is we've got the, give you an overview of, of how the chains, the first, first run of your chain to pick the truck up is actually set up. The chain goes underneath both front axles, glad and hand together. So basically you're, you're basketing the whole back suspension of the truck. Make sure the air ride suspension on your tractor is dropped. Come back and hook to your jib on both sides. Real simple.